Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and in the aftermath of Sunak's Rwanda bill vote last night, what celebration there might have been amongst the Tory ranks was instantly shattered as the Times revealed the results of their latest YouGov poll. Not just the headline results, but the details under the bonnet as well. And it shows a Conservative Party in full tailspin. Now, it's possible that if they can put the Rwanda bill in fighting behind them, they can stabilise. But if not, this poll will not be a blip, but a sign of things to come. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So the Tory rebels were, of course, soundly defeated yesterday. Now they're trying to distract from their own impotent failures by talking about confidence letters going in again. You know, the number of times we've been told confidence letters are going in, it's clearly just two or three. Otherwise, we'd have had a, uh, you know, a, a confidence vote by now. You know, if the number ever reached that required to trigger a contest, it would be a spectacular act of self-destruction. And it appears the majority of Tory MPs know that. Yes, Rishi Sunak is absolutely useless at politics. He is absolutely leading his party down the wrong path. But that's not an argument at the moment to replace him because they don't have anyone lined up who is better or would steer the party into calmer waters. In fact, the very people who most want Sunak gone are those who want to install a leader who would be even further away from the general public. And there have been a couple of polls published which should be of huge concern to any Conservatives actually trying their best for the election. And when I say published, I mean today. The first is, of course, the YouGov poll, which has just dropped, their usual one for the Times this time. The headline results are simply the stuff of nightmares for the Tories. <laughs> it would yield 41 seats for the Conservatives without taking tactical voting into account. If you take tactical voting into account, it's actually, it is proper Canada 1993 territory. You could say that YouGov tend to be the pollster most harsh on the Conservatives. Indeed, I've said that for a while. But they are also one of the only two who have come away from the past few general elections with their methodology justified. But it's under the bonnet where things get really interesting. But before I get into that, I want to take a look at another poll, this time from Lord Ashcroft. Now, Lord Ashcroft is a Conservative, and I don't just mean he tends towards being a Conservative. He's been a senior member of the Conservative Party. He's a proper Conservative for context. There's a lot of interest in his polls published today, but there's one that stands out. So asking 2019 Labour, Lib Dem and Conservative voters, as well as all voters combined, about how to rank the five priorities that Sunak himself declared last January were the priorities. Cutting inflation, cutting NHS waiting lists, growing the economy, reducing government debt and stopping the boats. So everyone was asking, well, which is the most important? Now, forget for now how each of those is going. The poll was asking them which is the most important, right? For 2019 Conservative voters, it was 30% saying stop the boats. That was the most important. Now, this makes it sound like the emphasis on the Rwanda plan whilst trying to do practical things to reduce boat numbers is sound strategy. However, for Labour voters, it is bottom of the pile on 5%, as it is for Lib Dem voters. For all voters combined, it's second with only 16% saying it's the top priority. So that 30% of Conservative voters thinking it's the top issue, they're not the voters Labour are fighting for. They're the voters on the right. They're the ones... The, the, the voters that are deciding between Tory or Reform UK, not Tory or Labour. You know, it's between the party with a proven track record of failure on channel crossings, indeed the party who invented the problem in the first place, didn't exist five years ago, and a party with zero chance of forming a government. Tough choice. But either way, Labour aren't interested. This is what made Rishi Sunak's Rwanda plan press conference today all the more baffling. He's behaving as if this is a wedge issue with Labour and this is his next play. It's not. It has zero chance of becoming one. But I'll tell you what else was interesting about this poll. Growing the economy seemed to be a low priority across, well, across the board, really, but certainly for both 2019 Labour and Conservative voters, 16 and 17 percent respectively saying it's the top issue. Uh, you know, the top issue for those Labour voters was cutting inflation and NHS waiting lists. Now, I find that quite interesting because it suggests that Labour can lean into successes in the eyes of voters in power with a focus on inflation and waiting lists. 
which will be way easier to get back under control than economic growth in the first few years. But I'll, I'll put a link in the description below to all the other polling results because there's a lot of interest there. But back to the YouGov poll. So first of all, let's look at the tracker, the, the trend, not the, not the um, single point in time, but the overall trend. So the trend over the last few weeks has been of the gap opening up again, not closing, opening up again between Labour and the Conservatives. Now, if you're a Tory strategist, you need to find out what's causing that and stop it. The best case scenario for Sunak is that it's been caused by the Conservative Party threatening to implode over the Rwanda plan. Obviously, party disunity goes down very badly with the public. It's not the stuff of good government. If that is the case, then now that it's past the common stages, if Tory MPs can be persuaded to shut up about it and talk about other issues, they can reverse that trend and then in a couple of months' time, it'll look like a blip. However, if it's caused by more systemic issues or if Tory MPs keep having their internal squabbles, then this widening of the gap will stabilise as the new norm. What we're seeing in the breakdown is predictable but disastrous for the Tories. First of all, they are losing voters hand over fist to both Labour and Reform UK, but more to Reform UK. Reform UK's advantage is that they can promise to do all the mad things that the Conservatives like to promise to do, but they're not proven failures like the Tories. The Conservatives will point out that Reform UK cannot possibly form a government and that it's not a choice between Reform UK and the Conservatives, but the Conservatives and Labour. And when it gets to the general election campaign and voters' brains sort of switch into, oh, actually, my vote matters now, that'll work on some voters. That will absolutely work, but on how many? And the more votes they lose to Reform UK, the more seats they will lose to Labour and the Lib Dems. Put simply, the Tories need to find a way to counter Reform UK. Trying to offer similar but not quite as extreme policies is not working, particularly when those policies are failing. They need to actually attack the credibility of Reform UK, but they seem afraid to do so. I've said in the past, the Conservatives, happy as Larry to attack Labour or the Lib Dems or the SNP, whoever you like, They've never attacked Reform UK. Never. On a fundamental basis. The only, the closest they come to is saying, oh, a vote for Reform UK is a vote for Labour. But they never actually say what it is about Reform UK that's bad. It's like they're afraid to do so. And the worst case scenario here for the Tories is as the election looms closer, think about some of those Conservatives who under other circumstances, you know, would be attracted to Reform UK. They see that their seats are dead and buried. They've got zero chance of retaining them. They think to themselves, well, there isn't even anything within the Conservative Party for me. Uh, it's not like I'm going to be able to pop up somewhere else for a seat in a, in a safer um, constituency in a future election. The Conservative Party is of zero value to me anymore. There's a good chance one or two could defect to Reform UK. Not only might they think they could stand a better chance of winning, because that's that could be a tempter for them. If they think that it's the Conservative banner that's no longer a vote winner for them that's actually dragging them down, they may think they stand a better chance with Reform UK. But also they might think to themselves, well, what is there to lose? Then there's the age demographics. Now, I talked this week about the Tories' long-term problems with middle-aged voters simply not tilting towards the Conservatives as previous generations did or yeah so with each election that passes so what generally happens is more core supports die because the conservatives focus very much on the elderly voters so obviously more of more tory voters die uh, you know between elections than uh, voters for other parties of course and then they make them up because as people go into middle age they tend towards becoming conservative right but it's not happening in the uk there's there's now a, that trend is not happening to the same extent, you know, and you look at the age breakdown. So of the young generation, 18 to 24 year olds, only 4% of them say they're going to vote Tory. For the next age group, 25 to 49, it's 12%. Like even for the over 65s, it's just 36%. To Labour's 29. Labour are not that far behind them. The Conservatives are losing voters everywhere and from everyone. And you look at the age breakdown and you think, so in 10 years time, when the Conservatives look like they might be sorting themselves out, getting serious about winning an election again, they may find that the voters just aren't there. 
without a major readjustment of their policies. And I mean major. And that's without taking into account the fact that 16 and 17 year olds will have the vote. Hopefully EU citizens will have the vote as well. We may have proportional representation. I certainly hope we will. You know, it's been pointed out that Labour's lead over the Conservatives amongst everyone under the age of 50 is 50. For everyone under 50, Labour have 60% of the voting intention and the Conservatives 10%. In fact, amongst the under 50s, the Green Party have as many votes coming their way as the Conservatives. Think on that. Imagine what Conservative MPs will do with this information. No matter which polls they turn to, and admittedly, this is the worst of the lot. But no matter which one they look at, they're looking at wipeout possibilities here. They know they can't replace Sunak again. Some MPs think that it will make things worse. And there are some MPs who don't. But the MPs who think actually they could improve things with a change of leader again will now realise after this week that they don't have the numbers to make it happen. So it's not happening. They can't think about replacing Sunak. They will also know that Sunak has set his course for the election now. So major changes of policy also seem very unlikely. I mean, what do you do at this point? If you're a Conservative MP who is actually looking at this critically and you're thinking, look, my, my constituency is scheduled for a takeover here, what are you going to do? Conservative MPs essentially have two choices. The first is to blindly unite behind Sunak, do exactly what the Tory strategists say, as uninspiring and clearly wrong as it is, in the belief that a, a team of badly led players working as one will achieve more than better led players doing their own thing, all doing their own thing, right? The second is to focus on life after the election. If they're going to lose their seat, look for other jobs. If they're going to keep their seat, position themselves for the leadership contest to come. Not necessarily to stand, but to back the winner. Because you look at polling like this, and bear in mind that the balance of polls this month has been a slight widening of the polls, not as big a gap opening up as you gov hold, but it has been a widening of the polls. And you see that the best the Conservatives can hope to do is stabilise things and at least win treble numbers of seats. Because at the moment, they are really seriously on for double. Of all the 2019 Conservative voters asked about their voting intention, only 35% they would vote Conservative again. That's just over a third. And when you filter out those who either said don't know or refuse to answer, it's still only 49%. So of the 2019 Conservative voters who think they know who they're going to vote for, 49% are saying Conservative, less than half. You know, there's no cavalry coming to save them. There's only the difference between a crushing defeat and complete oblivion. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.